Out at the open, clear seas with the cheers of seagulls about, Kobe and Luffy find themselves aboard a small boat, gently rocking with the rhythm of the waves. The crisp salt air fills their lungs as they engage in a lively discussion. The sunlight dances upon the shimmering surface of the water, casting a radiant glow that envelops the scene. Luffy, seated at the head of the boat, gazes out into the boundless expanse of the sea, his curiosity piqued. With a quizzical expression, he turns to Kobe and asks, Monster, huh? Kobe, his eyes fixed upon the distant horizon, responds with a tinge of caution in his voice. Yeah, Luffy. Roranoa Zoro is also known as the Pirate Hunter. He's a scary person. Rumor says he's like a bloodthirsty hound. He wanders around the sea and hunts down fugitives. He's a monster in the form of a man. Luffy, his straw hat casting a shadow over his determined face, raises an eyebrow and leans forward, intrigued. Oh, yeah, he challenges. Kobe's eyes widen as he quickly waves his hands frantically, his voice filled with urgency. So let's drop the idea of recruiting him. Interrupting Kobe, Luffy turns around, his gaze piercing through his companion. His tone carries a hint of contemplation as he asserts, I haven't made up my mind about recruiting him yet. But if he's a good person, Kobe's voice rises, tinged with exasperation. He's arrested because he's bad. The tension lingers in the air as the boat continues its voyage, the vastness of the sea stretching out before them, mysteries of the fabled Roranoa Zoro is yet to be uncovered. The discussion hangs in the air, their differing perspectives teasing at the boundaries of their friendship, while the seagulls overhead cry out, as if echoing the uncertainty that lies ahead. One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. Chapter 3. Pirate Hunter Zoro Enters. Sometime later, Luffy and Kobe finally arrive at the marine base where Zoro is being held. The Shell Town, the place they landed on, is a quaint coastal settlement, with rows of houses nestled closely around the formidable structure of the base. The air is filled with an aura of authority and strict discipline. Luffy, overwhelmed by their accomplishment, stretches his left arm high into the air and exclaims with excitement, We're finally at the Marines' base! Kobe, sharing his enthusiasm, agrees with a nod. Luffy, impressed by Kobe's navigational skills, praises him, You're great, Kobe! However, Kobe is taken aback by the compliment, his confusion evident on his face. Luffy, with a wide grin, declares, We've actually reached our destination! Kobe, ever the practical one, points out the obvious. Of course, that's the basics of navigation. If you wander around at sea every time, you'll never become a pirate. You should at least find a navigator to join you. Interrupting Kobe's words, Luffy's hunger takes over, and he happily exclaims, All right, let's go eat! The bustling streets of a vibrant town served as the backdrop to the encounter between Luffy and Kobe. Their hungry stomachs led them to a small, cozy restaurant known as Food Foo. Its sign, weathered by time, swung precariously above the entrance, barely holding on with a fork connected to the letter O. Inside the restaurant, Luffy, a jovial figure finished his food with a stuffed belly, sat across from Kobe, his tearful eyes betraying a deep sadness. Luffy, attempting to lift Kobe's spirits, offered his parting words, his voice filled with encouragement. We'll go our separate ways here. You do your best to be a great Marine, all right? Kobe, his hands rubbing against his moist eyes, sobbed as he mustered a reply. I will. Thank you so much, Luffy. You have to become a great pirate, too, although we'll be enemies in the future. Luffy, struck by a sudden thought, voiced his curiosity aloud. Say, I wonder if Zoro is still being kept at the Marine's base. The mere mention of Zoro's name caused a commotion within the restaurant. Tables flipped with shocking accuracy, sending the other patrons scurrying to the farthest wall opposite Luffy and Kobe. Perplexed and intrigued, Luffy and Kobe exchanged glances. In hushed tones, Kobe whispered, 
Looks like we can't just yell out the name Zorro. Collecting himself, he continued in a normal voice. I just saw a notice on the streets. There's someone called Captain Morgan at the base. As Kobe uttered the name of the Marine in charge, the effect repeated itself. The customers, consumed by panic and worry, leaped from their chairs, desperate to distance themselves from any association. Undeterred, Luffy and Kobe left the restaurant, laughter dancing in Luffy's voice as he marveled at the reactions of the townsfolk. What an interesting restaurant. I gotta go there again, he remarked, lightening the somber mood. Yet, Kobe's expression held an undercurrent of concern. That's strange. I have a bad feeling about this. I could understand why they'd be scared after hearing Roronoa Zoro's name since he could escape at any time. But why would they be afraid of a marine captain's name too? Luffy, adopting a more serious tone, replied, Well, he could have done something bad, right? In a burst of emotion, Kobe shouted, That's impossible! Undeterred by Kobe's outburst, Luffy calmly contested, I'm serious! Upon walking to the center, Luffy and Kobe stood before the imposing iron gate that guarded the marine base. It was a formidable fortress, with a high wall encircling two tall blue-striped buildings camouflaged within. Atop the main building, the word marine stood proudly, marking the significance of the place. Luffy surveyed the site before him and couldn't help but voice his opinion, it looks pretty ugly up close. His gaze shifted towards the tall border of the fortress, and he gestured towards it, saying, Go ahead, Kobe. Kobe, his hands fidgeting nervously, hesitated in response. But, but I'm not prepared yet. Besides, that incident at the restaurant got me thinking. Without a second thought, Luffy began to climb the wall, determined to find Zoro. Luffy! Kobe's voice quivered with anxiety as he called out. Luffy, perched atop the wall, turned to him with curiosity and said, Monster, I wonder where he is. Luffy swiftly descended from the wall and darted off to another section, eager to gain a better view of someone he had spotted within the base. Kobe, struggling to keep up, added, You can't find him that easily. He's probably being kept in a secret room or something. No, I saw something over there, Luffy insisted, running closer towards the distant figure. It could be Zoro. Motivated by Luffy's determination, Kobe climbed up the wall to join him. Look at that person, Luffy said casually. However, as soon as Kobe caught sight of Zoro's dead, silent, and evil aura, fear gripped him, and he stumbled backward, tumbling to the ground. Concerned, Luffy questioned Kobe, what's wrong? Shaking uncontrollably, Kobe managed to utter with panic, that, that, that black bandana and cloth around his waist, it, it's him, it's Roronoa Zoro, and that intimidating aura, it's Zoro. Before them, Zoro, his head hung low with blood streaming from his wounds, was heavily bound to a massive post. Luffy, unfazed, quipped from atop the wall, So he's Zoro. Looks to me those ropes are pretty easy to break. Stop! Stop joking! Kobe pleaded, his voice filled with alarm. If you free him, he could make a mess in the town and even kill you. But Luffy remained undeterred, continuing to engage with Zoro. Zoro lifted his bruised head and stared back, his mouth stained with blood. Could you please come over here and untie me? I've been tied up for nine days and I'm exhausted. Observing Zoro's smile, Luffy remarked, Look, he's smiling. Still trembling with fear, Kobe stammered, He, he talked! He cowered behind the wall, desperately trying to find safety. Zoro's voice echoed, determined yet desperate. I'll repay you. I could hunt down a fugitive and give you the rewards. I'm not lying. I'll keep my word. Kobe, clutching the wall tightly, looked at Luffy with concern, his voice laden with worry. No, don't do it, Luffy. Don't be tricked by his words. If you free him, he'll kill us and escape. Luffy, never one to back down, retorted while keeping his gaze fixed on Zoro. He can't kill me, because I'm strong too. As blood continued to trickle down Zoro's face, his eyes locked with Luffy's. Terrified, Kobe could only think to himself, he, he's really hopeless. As they spoke, an unexpected figure emerged as she ascended the ladder with nimble steps. Rika, a young girl, appeared beside them. Her presence interrupted their discussion, demanding silence. Climbing over the wall, Rika paid no heed to the danger that lay before her. Kobe, his voice filled with concern, beckoned her to stop. Don't do it, it's dangerous, he warned 
his eyes fixed on the perilous path she had chosen. Zoro, puzzled by the unexpected interruption, spoke up. Hey, what are you doing here? He asked, his tone laced with curiosity and a hint of irritation. Kobe, feeling a surge of responsibility, quickly turned to Luffy, pleading for assistance. Luffy, go stop her! She could get killed! He implored. Luffy, never one to shy away from a challenge, contested Kobe's request. Do it yourself, he retorted. Zoro, observing the young girl's determined approach, looked down at her with a mix of disbelief and concern. Do you want to die or something? Get lost, he exclaimed. But Rika, undeterred by Zoro's dismissive words, spoke with an air of respect. Brother, I made some rice balls for you. You haven't eaten for a long time, right? She extended her hand, revealing two perfectly shaped onigiri. This is the first time I made rice balls, she continued. Rika's eyes shimmered with hope as she offered the sustenance to the man who had gone days without nourishment. Zoro, adamant in his refusal, rejected her gesture. I'm not hungry, go away, he bellowed, his voice reflecting his hardened exterior. But Rika persisted, her determination unyielding. Zoro's harsh words did not deter her. I don't want it! Leave me! I'll kill you if you don't go! He threatened, his frustration reaching its peak. Suddenly, a group of marines emerged from the distance, marching towards Zoro with an air of arrogance. Among them was a figure that stood out, Helmeppo, the son of the marine captain in charge. Behind him, two marines were dressed in a white sailor outfit adorned with a blue tie. They sported a hat that proudly displayed the word Marine. A mocking smirk played on Helmeppo's face as he approached Zoro. Rora Noah Zoro, he taunted, his voice dripping with disdain. Don't pick on little kids, or else I'll have to report it to my father about it. Zoro's eyes narrowed as he regarded Helmeppo's appearance. The young man was lanky, of average build, with a distinctive cleft chin and light blonde hair. His eccentric hairstyle resembled a bizarre mushroom, and his flashy leisure suit added to his overall flamboyance. Observing the scene from a safe distance, Luffy and Kobe leaned against the wall, eyeing the approaching figure. Luffy couldn't help but remark, some weirdo came. Kobe, his voice tinged with unease, replied, he must be someone important in the Marines. Thank goodness the girl is safe now. Zoro, his voice filled with regret, muttered, if it isn't the captain's bastard son. Helmeppo sneered, raising his hand to his ear in a mocking gesture. Bastard? Don't get cocky. My dad is a Marine lieutenant, he retorted. In an act of cruelty, he snatched the rice balls that a young girl named Rika had made. Well, hello, little girl, Helmeppo jeered, inspecting the rice balls. These rice balls look pretty tasty. Rika, her voice trembling, mustered the courage to protest. Stop it. Ignoring her pleas, Helmeppo took a bite of the rice ball and immediately spat it out in disgust. Horrible. You put too much sugar in it, he exclaimed, his face contorted with disgust. You're supposed to put salt in these things. Tears welled up in Rika's eyes as she innocently replied, But, but I thought they'll taste better if they're sweet. Enraged by the disrespect shown towards Rika's efforts, Kobe watched in shock as Helmeppo callously knocked the rice balls to the ground and stomped on them. How could someone eat something like this? Damn it! The captain's son exclaimed in anger. Unable to contain her anguish any longer, Rika cried out, Stop it, stop! He can't eat this anymore. Kobe, his voice filled with compassion, said to himself, That's so cruel. That girl worked so hard to make them. With a cruel smile etched on his face, Helmeppo continued his torment. Don't worry, the ants will eat them all up, he taunted, laughing as he smeared his foot with the remnants of the ruined rice balls on the floor. Rika, her tears streaming down her face, sobbed. That's so cruel. I, I tried really hard to make them. Frustration evident on his face, Helmeppo placed a hand on his head and mockingly chided her. Don't cry, it's no wonder why I hate brats so much. It's all your fault, you know. He gestured towards a wooden post nearby, displaying a law enacted by his father, Marine Captain Morgan. The law decreed, anyone who helps a prisoner will be charged with the same crime. Helmeppo stared directly at the young girl, his gaze laden with threat. You know how scary my dad can be, right? You would have gotten the death penalty if you were a grown-up. 
Taking pleasure in his abuse of power, Helmeppo quickly commanded one of the Marine soldiers standing behind him. Throw this brat out, he ordered. The Marine, bewildered by the callous command, hesitated for a moment. Helmeppo, his fury building, strode up to the soldier, grabbing his collar forcefully. He bellowed, I'm telling you to throw her out of here. Are you trying to disobey me? I'm telling my dad. The Marine, overcome with fear, finally shouted, I, I, sir. Without further delay, he threw Rika over the towering walls of the fortress, leaving her to rely on the quick reflexes of Luffy, who caught her safely from the other side. Kobe, filled with righteous anger, consoled the shaken girl. Are you all right? Those bastards! Luffy brushed off the incident and turned his gaze back towards the execution area, determination etched on his face. Helmeppo, satisfied with his display of power, sneered at Zoro, taunting him once again. I didn't think you'd have this kind of endurance. Zoro, unyielding in the face of adversity, responded with unwavering determination. I'm gonna keep you alive for one whole month. You better keep your promise. Helmeppo laughed mockingly as he walked away, accompanied by his soldiers. I'll keep my promise. If you can live like this for one whole month, I'll keep my word and release you. Good luck. As Helmeppo disappeared from view, Zoro turned his attention to Luffy, who now stood directly in front of him. You still haven't left yet? Zoro asked, his voice laced with caution. Leave now, or else he'll go tell his dad about it. Luffy, his eyes glinting with determination, contested, Oh yeah? I'm looking for someone to join my pirate fleet. Zoro's surprise was evident in his voice as he responded, Pirate? So you just gave up on life and became a crook? Undeterred, Luffy boldly declared, It's my dream. There's nothing wrong with being a pirate. A wicked grin spread across Zoro's face as he teasingly asked, Don't tell me you're gonna set me free and force me to join you. Luffy smiled back, patting his straw hat, a symbol of his own aspirations. I haven't made up my mind yet. Since everyone thinks you're a bad guy, he said, his tone filled with mischief. Zoro, his own resolve unshakable, smiled back and replied, A bad guy? I'll never join you, because I have something that I need to take care of. I could survive even if you don't help me. If I can survive for a month, I'll be set free. That idiot son made a promise. I'm gonna do everything I can to stay alive and fulfill my dreams. With a hint of admiration, Luffy responded, Really? If I were you, I think I'd starve to death in a week. Zoro's determination burned fiercely as he emphasized their differences. That's why we're different. Go find someone else to join you. After their brief exchange, Luffy turned away and began walking toward the wall. But just as he was about to disappear from view, Zoro called out, halting his departure. Hey, hold on! Zoro shouted. Puzzled, Luffy looked back at him, waiting for an explanation. Zoro's request was unexpected as he asked, That, can you pick it up for me? His green hair showing as he raised his head up. Curiosity peaked, Luffy obliged, picking up the remnants of the smeared, dirt-filled rice ball from the ground. You want to eat this? But the rice ball is all muddy. Well, I guess you can't be picky about food when you're hungry, he commented his tone tinged with surprise. Zoro, his voice commanding, interjected, Shut up! He opened his mouth wide, prepared for what was to come. Just give it to me, let me eat all of it! Placed the food in his mouth, Zoro tried to hold it in with every bite he chewed and managed to swallow it. Hesitant, Luffy questioned, Do you want to kill yourself? With tears welling up in his eyes, Zoro swallowed his pride and replied plainly, Tell that little girl. Luffy, waiting for Zoro's request, pressed further. Tell her what? Zoro's voice, filled with honesty and gratitude, rang out. The rice balls taste very good. Thank you very much. Luffy couldn't help but burst into laughter, appreciating the unexpected show of gratitude in the midst of their dire circumstances. Later outside in the local suburbs of Shelltown, Luffy, Kobe, and Rika found a place to sit down and chat. The sun cast a warm glow on the bustling streets, a quaint town filled with colorful buildings and lively market stalls. They settled themselves on a staircase, situated in the middle of the streets. Rika listened attentively, her face lighting up with joy as Luffy described how Zoro had devoured every last bite. Yep, he ate all of it, Luffy exclaimed, his voice filled with excitement. Rika, her cheer infectious, responded with a beaming smile. 
I'm so happy, she exclaimed, her voice carrying a hint of admiration for Zoro. Kobe, in honesty, couldn't help but voice his doubts. Is he really that horrible person his reputation says he is? He asked, his brow furrowing with genuine curiosity. Rika shook her head vehemently, denying Kobe's comment. Brother didn't do anything wrong. It's just that the people in this town are afraid of him, she explained, her voice tinged with a mixture of frustration and affection. Memories of her past encounters with Zoro flooded her mind, and she continued, her voice softening with a hint of sadness. He got arrested because of me. He killed Helmeppo's pet wolf, Sorrow, because Helmeppo let his wolf run around and everyone got scared, Luffy interjected, trying to make sense of the situation. So you're saying that Zoro's only arrested because he killed Helmeppo's wolf, he asked, his tone incredulous. Rika nodded. You're right. So maybe he has a bad temper, but chasing down fugitives, isn't that a big crime either? Kobe comments. The girl sitting beside Luffy chimed in. The only bad guys are the Morgans. You'll get executed if you disobey them so everyone is afraid of them, she declared, her words carrying a weight of fear and defiance. As Rika finished explaining the story, suddenly, a loud outburst shattered the tranquility of the town square. Helmeppo, the son of the captain, burst into laughter, his voice dripping with superiority. Luffy's head snapped around in alarm, his eyes widening as he took in the sight before him. The citizens of the town started kneeling creating a path for Helmeppo and his two marine companions to pass through. Helmeppo, swinging his legs from side to side with unwavering confidence, taunted the crowd. Who dares raise his head? I'll tell my dad, do you want to be like Roranoa Zoro? I'm going to publicly execute him in three days. I'll use him to set an example for all of you. It's going to be pretty interesting, he proclaimed, his voice booming with arrogance. Luffy, his anger simmering beneath the surface, couldn't help but challenge Helmeppo. He stood up, his eyes locked on the captain's son. Three days? Didn't you say you'll give him a month? He questioned, his voice laced with defiance. The air grew tense as the citizens gasped in disbelief, their eyes shifting between Luffy and Helmeppo. The arrogant young man responded with a dismissive smirk. Who are you? How rude! He sneered, puffing his cheeks with exaggerated confidence. I was only joking with him. Only an idiot would believe that, he laughed, his words dripping with contempt. Recalling the promise Zoro had made to him, Luffy's anger flared, and without thinking, he lunged forward, grabbing Helmeppo's pink collar. Panic flickered in Luffy's eyes as he looked at Helmeppo, his voice trembling with rage. The onlookers held their breath, witnessing the confrontation unfold. In an instant, Luffy's fist connected with Helmeppo's face, the force of the punch resonating through the square. Kobe, struggling to hold Luffy back, shouted desperately, Luffy, stop, please, calm down. Luffy, his breathing heavy and his fist still clenched, glared at Helmeppo. You bastard, he spat, his voice seething with anger. Kobe, his voice tinged with urgency, warned Luffy of the consequences. You want to mess with the Marines or something? he exclaimed, his tone a mix of concern and caution. But Luffy stood firm, his resolve unyielding. With a resolute gaze, he declared, Kobe, I've decided. Kobe, taken aback by his friend's determination, questioned him, his voice filled with curiosity. Decided what? A spark of determination ignited in Luffy's eyes as he spoke his mind. I'm gonna ask Zoro to join me, he proclaimed, his voice carrying a blend of conviction and hope. 